to most East Africans, the word M-Pesa isn't something new to their ears. Launched in 2007 by Vodafone and Safaricom, the largest mobile network operator in Kenya, M-Pesa quickly spread becoming among the top mobile money operators in the world. M standing for mobile and Pesa, a Swahili word meaning money. M-Pesa is an electronic financial service that allows customers money transfer services, payments and deposit of money into an account on their mobile phones. In 2019, there were approximately 1.04 billion mobile money registered accounts in the world. Sub-Saharan Africa accounted for 45% of all accounts, almost half of the world, with most users coming from East Africa. In 2019 alone, mobile money transactions in East Africa reached a value of $293.4 billion, surpassing all areas in the world. But how was this possible? How did mobile money become so big in East Africa? The development period in Africa. Philippines were the first adapters of mobile money services in the world. Smart Communications launched Smart Money back in 2001. In most African countries whereby financial institutes like banks are limited in specific areas, it's hard for everyone to obtain a personal account. And with the constraining required documentation by these financial institutes, having a personal account becomes difficult to many. Mobile money makes it possible for unbanked people to pay and receive money with just their cell phone. The only things that are required to start with mobile money services is a cell phone and a registered phone number. With the growing number and need of mobile money services, new markets emerge across the African continent. West Africa is another booming market for mobile money users. Okay, I think we're perfect. Hi everybody, it's your boy N-A-B-B-I-E. Yeah. I'm, I'm in Accra, Accra, Ghana. There are about four, three different types of mobile money here in Ghana. According to the network you use, and I use uh, MTN mobile money because that's um, how people normally transact money through, and um, it's it's like the easiest and fastest, and um, almost everyone is using that. The main formula that has led to the success of mobile money in Africa is ensuring the services are compatible with all phones and without the need for users to install anything else or connect to the internet to use the services. The digital wallets are operated via a text interaction driven interface, which only requires basic knowledge of a cell phone for a customer to do the transactions. This allowed individuals with informal education across Africa to have access to this new form of financial services. Nokia, Samsung, Techno, and Phoenix and Itel are just few of many mobile devices flooded in the continent of Africa. Most of their prices are under 25 US dollars and some even reaching at $10, making them affordable for the first time cell phone users. With most telecom operators giving out SIM cards for free and free registration of mobile money services, this has increased the access and usage of mobile phones by more and more Africans. And with local marketing campaigns, mobile money rapidly grew to what it is today. Yeah, like, do you see yourself like, uh, like, can you survive without mobile money? No, you can't survive any day with, without mobile money. Because sometimes um, your bank will fail you. You go to the ATM, there's yeah. no service. Sometimes you go to a different one, your card gets locked, blah, blah, blah. But when you have mobile money, there's so many places that you can withdraw from. Yeah. And it's fast and easy. And even if you can't withdraw, you can use it to pay. Let's say if the services go down, you can actually use it to pay. So if you would rather have no cash on you, but you'll be paying for things around. Mobile money has really impacted many Africans socially and mostly economically. It has opened up new economic opportunities which were not possible before. Yes, that's really, 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 really changed the way I do transactions. Because initially, when, let's say, the freelance work I'm doing, I have to go for the money from far distance. Let's say I'll travel for like <clears throat> a dollar yeah. to go for my money. And if my money is like $10, that means I'm going away with $2 already yeah. for transport. Yeah. But now, the money is sent to me. There are just a few charges at some points. And then, yeah, I'll get my money back. Emergence of Digibanks, which are another form of mobile money that allows users to have financial services on their phones. Good examples are like Zazu, Nala Money, and Kuda. 
Could this be a signal of the shift from a cash-based Africa to a digital Africa? Thank you very much for watching this week's episode. Please feel free to subscribe for more episodes like this and don't forget to share with a friend.